Mr. Harris here and welcome to a new video of chapter 4.2. In this video we're going to talk about sexual maturity. And we'll be focusing on the second stage of maturity, which is when we are at the stage of being a teenager. Sometimes we refer to this stage as puberty. So I'll be using the word puberty more often. Puberty is a stage when a child would eventually develop into an adult. This, it is also the stage where the reproductive system, they become mature. So another word for mature could be where the reproductive system becomes more developed. Or you could say it has grown further. Usually for girls, they would enter puberty earlier than boys. Also, in puberty, more sex hormones are produced. In boys, the testes would start to produce more sperms, and in girls, the ovaries would start to release the ova. Right, so to summarize so far what we have learned, the girls would enter puberty earlier than boys. Also, during puberty, our body begins to produce more sex hormones. This causes the testis in boys to start producing sperms. And the ovaries to start releasing the ova in girls. Also, secondary, like how all of you are in secondary school, Secondary sexual characteristics start to appear. Now, what are secondary sexual characteristics? Let's have a look. So these characteristics would start to appear in adult males and females. So these are the external features, those that can be seen from the outside. So let's have a look over here. Usually, the beard would grow on the face of a male, of course. Number two, the larynx, so this is like the voice box, would become larger and the voice becomes deeper. This is also for a male. The shoulder becomes wider and the body is more muscular. This is also for the male. So these characteristics, as you can see, are, the ex are seen on the external features, are seen on the external side. Number four and number five, these are the characteristics of a female. The hips become wider. And number six, the hair grows on the pubic areas and armpits. This is for both males and females. So all in all, we have six secondary sexual characteristics for males and females. Moreover, you may ask me, Mr. Harris, are there any signs Signs, not science. This is science, S-I-G-N-S, not science. All right, make sure you distinguish between the two. Are there any signs of sexual maturity? How would we know whether a person is going through this? So there are two different types of signs. So one sign is for a male and another is for a female. So for boys, they might, they might have something called nocturnal emission. Some of you might know it by the name of wet dreams. And girls would have menstruation, so something called menstrual cycle. So let's talk a bit more about them. So for nocturnal emission, semen would flow out during sleep. And as I've told you earlier, it is also called a wet dream. So it occurs at night, hence why the name Nocturnal, it means night. Emission means something would flow out, something's emitted. So in this case, semen is emitted. It could be stimulated by, it's not the cause, it's just stimulation. Stimulation means it could be encouraged or enhanced by. So it's not the primary reason of why nocturnal emissions occur. 
So it could be stimulated by tight pants, heavy blankets, or when you have a turning movement. During puberty, boys may experience nocturnal emissions. This is a sign of sexual maturity. Alright, let's go further. Now let's talk about the signs of a girl. So menstruation. When a girl's enter when a girl enters puberty, the ovary would release the ovum. So this is released around every 28 days. However, I want to make something very clear. It may vary from person to person. All right, someone might have it a longer time, someone might have it at a shorter time. So days before the ovum is re released, so before the ovum is released, the uterine lining would start to thicken up. Okay, this area will start to thicken up. Now why would it thicken up? The reason behind is because to prepare for receiving the embryo. So if the parents, the mother and father decide to have a baby, the uterine lining would thicken up by itself in order to receive the embryo. And I've mentioned before, a more accurate term for a baby at this stage would be an embryo. However, if the parents decide not to have a baby, so no fertilization, no fertilization occurs, then the uterine lining would break down. And this breaking down of the uterine lining is called menstruation. Okay, so apart from the uterine lining breaking down, the unfertilized egg, meaning the ovum, is also released. So let's recap so far. The menstrual cycle, as I mentioned, it lasts around 28 days. However, the length may vary from person to person. Let's talk a bit more. Usually, during the first five days, couple of days, if no fertilization take, takes place, as I mentioned earlier, if the parents did not decide not to have a baby, the uterine lining would break down and this is when menstruation occurs. All right. After this breaking down, the uterine lining would start to thicken up again, right, from days 6 to 13. And around day number 14, the ovum is released, usually, from the ovary. And for the rest of the 14 or so days, the uterine lining would continue to thicken up, so it becomes very thick. So if the parents decide to have a baby, then the uterine lining could support the receiving of the embryo. All right. So let's summarize so far. The thickness of the uterine lining changes during a, yes, menstrual cycle. Now, why is it called a cycle? Because let's go back over here. After day 28 occurs, then the whole, pro if if there's no fertilization, then as you can see on the diagram, from days one to five, it will start all over again. And then this goes on repeat, 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 till, uh, till, till the parents decide to have a baby. All right, let's move on. If the ovum is not fertilized, the thickened blank breaks down. Yes, the thickened uterine lining breaks down. Its tissues and blood pass up the, out of the body with the ovum. This process is called, when everything breaks down, what's the process called? Yes, it's called menstruation. All right, so this is a quick video on the two signs of 
males and females. So for males, nocturnal emission. For females, menstrual cycle. And of, of course, we also talked about the stage of sexual maturity, which is during puberty. All right, this is the end of this. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.